it's Lindsay from My Crafty Plans. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. Happy New Year. I am getting all back caught up and set up for the month of January and for 2024 in my planners. This is my new Erin Codron family organizer for 2024. This is my main monthly planner. I also do a bit of journaling and memory keeping in here as well. I used this planner all last year for 2023 and it was just my favorite thing. It's become such a core part of my life and I'm really excited to keep going with this for 2024. It's really, it's just such a fun layout. So this is the new one. This was available in two colorways this year, color blends and color blends neutral. I have the color blends neutral, which is just a softer color palette. It also has gray tabs, which is amazing. There is still a little bit of color on the individual pages, just going with like the color scheme and this page here is the one that in particular is pretty hard to cover so I will be working with the color schemes again this year. If you want to see more of my planner from last year I have a plan with me from every month last year and I will also be doing a final flip through of that planner after I just finish out a couple of memory spreads from December that I'm still working on. So I have some really pretty matching washi and simply gilded stickers here that I'm going to be using with. This is from the La Vie in Rose. I think this was from the Black Friday releases. Just really pretty stickers with use some of that and then also just some washi from that and some other Simply Gilded washi as well. There's no initial setup in this planner. I actually kind of wish there was some of that like year at a glance stuff in here just because of how I use this book. I do think that that would be really, really helpful, but it's not in here. It just starts right in right away. We've got like one blank page here and then January. So we will just be getting set up for January. The only thing other than that that I'm gonna do to get set up for the year ahead is actually take off this gorgeous cover. I absolutely love this. This is a permanent cover though and I did not realize it when I ordered it and this cover has gold foil and I upgraded this planner to have a rose gold coil and I just, I can't with the mixed metal. So I am gonna take this off. I'm gonna try and take it off really carefully so that I can still use this, fingers crossed, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm gonna probably trim it down and kind of try and treat this as like, a print but we'll see what happens with that I do have this other vegan leather cover here this one is this ballet slipper pink one that's just so so gorgeous so I'm gonna put that on instead because I just think yeah that's gonna look super super nice with the rose gold coil there I can always change it out then after because again that is an interchangeable cover I'm a little bit nervous to take this off but we're we're gonna go for it and then we're just gonna kind of dive right into January let me just show you what these pages look like just in case you've never seen seen this before you get like a cover page here. And again, this is from the Color Blends Neutral. This planner, at least the past two years, which is how long this planner has existed, it's always been a selection of colorways from the previous set of colorways. So Color Blends was the 2022-2023 life, one of the life planners. And now the Family Organizer is available in, again, Color Blends and Color Blends Neutral. Last year it was available in the Harmony Neutral and the Harmony Colorful, so there is always two options and one is usually a more brighter version and one is like a softer color palette. So then you get a monthly calendar here. Same as the calendar in any other Erin Codron 7x9 planner. It's just got Sunday start, little pop of color here, but no design on it on either of the colorways here. Just the line notes there on the side as well. And I use this as my main monthly calendar, my central scheduling hub as well. And I use this planner for every area of my life, just about not just family stuff. It just you know, that's how my brain works. Everything kind of works together. Then we have this place here, which has a recurring schedule, which I love, and some boxes here. We'll go over while I'm doing the plan with me what I use for everything. You've got this to-do list here, this section here that says family goals, and then this section here in the planner that makes absolutely no sense. This is the only piece of the planner that I do not love um, because it is a weekly habit tracker and task tracker, but this is a monthly planner. There are no weekly pages in here, and I never really kind of understood what this was really supposed to be used for so I use different thing I do different things with this different month sometimes I just decorate it sometimes I'll just like list out different habits that I'm working on or kids routines that I'm working on so kind of just like a little bit of flex space there as well then you've got this page here that says school dates to remember memories and milestone I do do some customization in here again you will see that as we're going through the planning then this one says extracurriculars milestones and achievements and memories I typically do one set of functional pages and one set of like memory keeping journaling pages here and just kind of customize some of the headers there then you get a double set of blank pages so a, d a double spread here and then one more here and again likewise I usually use one one set of those pages for functional and one set for memory keeping 
And then you have this little guided journal section in the back that I just love. It's the same every month that just says at favorites this month, funniest thing said, best memories from this month and special moments that I'll remember forever. And then here there's one more aligned page that says more memories and milestones. And I use that for my line a day memory keeper. And then that's it. You get this extra blank page, which you don't typically use next to the tab. And then it rolls right into the next month. So we're going to dive in. This is going to be sped up with a voiceover. We're going to get this all decorated and set up and everything. Again, usually when I do these videos, I do a flip through of the previous month and that will continue this year. But for this month, there's not going to be a flip through because one, I'm not finished with December just quite yet. I want to finish out a couple of last pages in there. And then two, I'm going to flip through that entire planner so you can see how it looked for the entire year. I just thought that would be fun. And before I dive into the January pages for today, I will be attempting to put these covers on. So I thought I would share that with you as well. The cover was pretty simple to take off. I did take out the stickers too. I decided to leave the folder. Usually I do take folders out of planners that are like my main planners. I just don't like the way it bulks them up, but I left the folder in all last year with mine. And even with using the stickers and washies like I did, I didn't have any problems with the folder last year. And I actually had been using it to store whatever stickers I was using that month if I was using stickers. So I decided to leave the folder in, but I did take the stickers out. I did not use any of those stickers in the planner last year. And I just keep a big pile of my EC stickers uh, somewhere else. So that way, if I'm using like something that matches the EC colorway, I can in, in a kit, then I can just go ahead and grab that. But anyway, I just cut all of the little holes uh, into them. I just used some scissors to cut each where the coil is. So I was able to take that out pretty neatly. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it again as a cover, but I should be able to use it as a print, which was my other intention for it. So we'll see how that goes. I will work on it. And then the vegan leather covers are so easy to put on, even easier than the plastic covers. Not that the plastic covers are difficult to put on, but they just snap in really beautifully and they do stay put really well. I had a vegan leather cover on my family organizer for most most of last year. I had the sage one on and I think the pink one's just going to be perfect. I can swap this out. I may swap this out. I have like some seasonal favorites and different things like that, but I just, I really love these vegan leather interchangeable covers. I hope they do more and I hope they do some of the designs on them. They're just really pretty and they feel really, really nice and they, I love being able to swap them. And I also just like the matte look of them. I just think it, especially since it's on camera a lot for me, it looks a lot nicer than the, the interchangeable ones tend to to be pretty shiny, which looks nice in person and it keeps the planner really safe in person, but it does create some glare with the camera sometimes. So anyway, I really like the vegan leather covers and I think I have almost every color of those now. So I'm just decorating up my calendar here, just putting down the different washi. I'm using a lot of stuff that I picked up at the Black Friday sale where I did buy the buy all bundle from Simply Gilded. So I have my La Vie and Rose, which is the stickers that I'm using, but I also have some coffee washies that also came out then and just some other book washies and different things that I thought matched with this. I've also got an older plain washi, plain like airplane that is. You'll see that in a bit when I use it to block off a week at the end of the month because we are going on vacation. I'm super, super excited. This is our big trip that we planned last year. We're actually going away with my whole family, like my parents, my brother and his family, and we're going on vacation all together for a full week. And I'm really, really excited for that. Besides that, there's not a ton that I'm going to be adding onto my calendar. I don't have a lot of stuff scheduled right now, which is probably good because I feel so behind on just like admin and life stuff coming out of winter break starting the new year wanting to get a really good strong start to the year so I just definitely feel like there's a lot of stuff going on not necessarily like appointment type things or plan type things but there's just like a lot going on and there's a lot going on in my head uh, that needs to just come out and live in this planner so that I can be all organized I really want to buckle down feel like I'm 100% caught up from winter break and like ready to start the year really really strong before we go on vacation so that I don't feel Feel like I'm, you know, just losing the entire month of January since it's kind of like book ended by a staycation, if you will, and a vacation at the end of the month. So that's really important to me this month and is pretty much my big focus for the next couple of weeks. I am going to add in a little bit of extra deco. It's January, trying to use up some of my foil stickers. I had these really cute number stickers that were from like a birthday kit. They like came with a birthday mystery kit sticker kit and uh, I had the numbers. So I just made a little 2024 there. I thought that was really cute and grabbed some fireworks. The fireworks and the stars are from Sadie stickers and those large numbers I believe are from Caress Press. All of those stickers are super, super old except for the simple 
Gently Gilded stickers, which as I mentioned, were from Black Friday. For right now, same key that I was using last year, back down to six categories again after our basement renovation. So we just have work, channels, appointments, kids, other, and finances. Those categories are still serving me really well, so I will stick with them. If I ever feel like I needed to add another category or change things up, I always can. I did for a large chunk of last year add in a seventh category that was home because we were having some construction work done, so I can always flex that back in when we get around to home projects or anything like that. But for right now, this is gonna work out. And again, I have very little going on the calendar as of right now. Uh, at the beginning of the month. It's definitely light on plan so far, but I will definitely add to this throughout the month. I always do. I look at this planner pretty much every day and certainly multiple times per week, but I always check in with this when I'm doing my weekly planning routine and I will add to my calendar uh, as soon as I, at that point at the latest, but usually even beforehand, because I usually am looking at this before I look at my weekly calendar. And now I'm putting down this plain washi. This is an older one. Um, I know she has done a lot of these in different colors, but uh, this was the only one I had in rose gold, but I think it matches like fairly well. It's not an exact match, but you know, I really wanted to use that to mark a trip. It's not very often that I get to use the airplane washi, so definitely wanted to do that. And I am, like I said, so excited for this vacation. January is definitely an odd time of year for us to be going away. That's like not at all typical. So I do want to just keep that in mind. And like I said, I feel like we're really coming out of vacation, even though we didn't really go anywhere over winter break, but we weren't, we weren't working. We're having a lot of family time. I was not getting any admin or house stuff done at that point, which is totally fine. We had a really amazing winter break, but with that, uh, with that being like honestly at this point a, a week ago and vacation coming up in a couple of weeks, I just want to make sure that I'm still on track for like getting a solid start to the year and getting the things that I need to get done done. So again, that is going to be my big focus for those weeks in between for the weeks that are going on right now. Just making sure I'm setting myself up for success and that way I can just maximally enjoy the vacation as much as possible and be fully relaxed at that point and totally on vacation mode. So this page here after the calendar is what I always call the dashboard page. On the left side, you have your recurring schedule and then there's three boxes, two lined and one blank. On this page, I'm in the blank box just decorating it right now. I always just use this box either to do like some kind of quote if I'm not using stickers or I just put a bunch of stickers and washies down or sometimes I doodle in there. Just something very decorative in this little space right here. Just adds a little pop of fun and decoration into that and I also find it kind of hard to write on like a big blank box like that not lettering right but just like to take notes in or whatever so I like to use that space for decoration and then I do set up a recurring schedule I used to put all of those things on my monthly calendar but I love having the recurring schedule now as like a little partner to the calendar uh, super super fun and keeps my calendar clear for more things that are like not that are slightly more out of the ordinary because the things that are happening every week which like the kids activities different chores that we have, like cleaning service, different things like that, that used to go on my calendar now just go in the recurring schedule and it takes up a lot less space in the calendar and helps me see things a lot more clearly, but I'm still keeping track of all of our regular, regularly scheduled things and I can add more chores and stuff like that into, into this as well. And then on the two line boxes on the side, I use one of those for appointments that I need to book or different things that I'm trying to schedule. That's the one on the top and then the second one I use for work projects for my freelance business. So I don't tend to have like a ton of different projects per month. Uh, so that that amount of space is just perfect for tracking things in my freelance business. I do have like work notebooks where I keep like a lot more details about that. But this way I can have like project deadlines and big picture things in my main planner, which is what this is because this is my main monthly planner. Um, I don't put a ton of channel stuff in here anymore. I do have a separate like social media planner because I felt like that was just totally taking over over all of the space in all of my planners. Um, so now that all goes in the Laurel Denise planner. I still do put like some really big things from that or like key, uh, if, I, if I have like a key collab date or anything like that, I will put that in my main monthly planner. But otherwise that tends to just stay in the content planner. And I do leave all of these open almost all of the time. So I can always just look 
through my planners. I have a really large planning desk that I use for filming and it usually has like three or four planners open on it at any, at any given time. Then over here on the right side of this page or on the right side of this spread, it's got a like bulleted list here. And I always use this as like kind of all of the task oriented goals that I have for my Moxie Life goal setting process for my monthly goals. All of the task oriented ones go in this list right here. When I write my goals in my Moxie Life, I think about things in the life area area and their impact. But when I translate them into my family organizer and into my other planners, I think about how they are accomplished. Is this like a mantra or a mindset? Is this a concrete task that, you know, you can say I did this and then check it off? Is this a habit? So those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about there. And I will translate that into this kind of format in here where the tasks are on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I add in some key themes for the month. I usually have three or four and I always put them with the little flags and they can be directly from my goals or just overarching themes that are you know, that come out of the goal setting process. It's not necessarily something that I've specifically written in the Moxie Life, but it's certainly inspired by the goal setting process. And I always do my goals before I set up my family organizer. The goal setting process is the beginning of my monthly planning process. And this month, especially, there was like a little bit of a gap in between them. Usually I do it pretty close together, but I wanted to make sure I had my goals set up before the month started. So I did work on them over winter break and had them done, I think on December 30th, but I did not get to my monthly calendar until after the first of the month and actually until after the kids went back to school, which usually I have this set up before the month begins, but that just didn't happen over winter break. Bottom here where you have that habit tracker that doesn't really make sense for this month. What I did is in the top section there, I'm actually going to list out some habits that I'm going to be working on this month so I can pull those into habit trackers if I'm planning on using them. Otherwise, just kind of have them as these are the things I'm working on. And then in the bottom section below, I started like listing out some new things that I wanted to work on. I My intention at first was like around like habits, but then I realized it was all just kind of financial stuff that I needed to to set up for the year ahead. So it's like more like financial tracking habits, we'll call it. So uh, something like that. And then I, um, so I just filled those in and then I covered up the the headers that were pre-assigned with these stickers from Simply Gilded, which the color match on this is like so perfect. And then I went ahead and just wrote in my headers. So the second one, I think I called work finances since it was just stuff around the new business finance tracking stuff that I want to get set up at the beginning of the year. Then on these dev pages here, here, which starts with the school stuff. I do use the school page and I just divided it up into PTA stuff and then preschool and elementary school. I do need to focus on getting the kids re-enrolled for school for next year. Not that it'll take very long. It's just one of the things that I need to catch up on that's on my admin list. Just at the top, I ran that scene washi over all the, all the way across. And then I just cut out where the words where I could see them through the washi to cut them out. And again, I am using this page for school. So I just kept the header and just kind of divided up the space. Some months I end up using this page a lot because I have a lot going on and some months I don't really use it at all. It just kind of depends. I feel like there's going to be a lot of PTA stuff going on this month. So I did leave myself some extra space there. I don't volunteer at the preschool anymore. So usually there's not too much going on there. It's just a place to note if there's like any supplies at the classroom that like, you know, if they're collecting paper towel holders or whatever, I can just jot that down so that I remember. Remember. And then on this side, I am going to use the part at the top as the dates to remember. I did cover up the where it said that, but I'm still going to use that for that. Although I ended up taking some notes around different things around that as well. Again, I just had a lot on my mind while I was setting this up. And then this bottom section down here, I flex depending on what's going on during the month. And for this month, I decided to put my admin catch up list on this. I just have like a ton of emails flagged, a ton of random notes on my phones, like text messages from people, different things like that. So just trying to consolidate all of the admin stuff that I need to catch up on into one space. And then I did color code that as well. I'm going to actually use the Erin Codron dot markers. They're not like an exact match to the colors that I was using in the planner, but they were close enough and I had them handy and I like how small the dots are on these. So I used that to just bucket these into a couple of different categories there. And the categories were kids stuff, house, and stuff related to the trip or to the trip that's coming up and also to the Disney trip that we're planning. I can always add in more colors if more stuff comes up. Then I 
started jotting down some dates a little bit for this month, but mostly stuff coming up in the next couple of months. And then I realized that I had some to do's associated with those dates. So I started to just add those in with arrows and it got a little bit messy, but I actually think it looks kind of cute. And I'm really happy that I'm using this pretty functionally. Uh, I feel like usually it's just like a list of dates that I sometimes look at and sometimes don't, but it's nice when I have like things associated with it. And just like, like I said, I really just needed to get all of this information that was in my brain my email, so many different places, just all out and organized in one place. And that is why I love this planner so much. Months like this are just why this planner is my one of my main core planners, why this for me feels at this point more essential than any of like the weekly or daily planners that I may or may not use. This is just like a central hub for my life. Then this next set of pages here, I do cover up where it says extracurriculars. I don't have that much stuff to say about extracurriculars. My kids are still pretty young, so they don't have a ton of stuff. I use this whole double spread as memory keeping and journaling. I like that division, having like all of the functional stuff on one page and then the memory stuff on the other page. I do use the milestones up at the top. I'll put in an initial for each of my kids and then I'll just like write like one little thing that they accomplished or that was going on in their lives or whatever for each of them for the month. And then I do have like a little journaling section right below that. Uh, this month, I did stick that gratitude sticker there. I'm thinking about doing gratitude journaling for the month of January. So we'll see how that goes. And then the left hand side of that page is usually where I do my book journaling. But again, a little bit TBD with what's going on with my Archer and Olive there. I still will be tracking books in here. I just think I'm going to save the more journaling bits for in my Archer and Olive and just do more of like a tracker in here and maybe incorporate some non-book things as well, like TV shows or podcasts or music or whatever I want to track in there as well. Then there are four blank line notes pages in this planner, and I use two of them for functional space, and I just call it my split listing page. So just random lists that I need throughout the month. And this one that I'm working on here is around that house project list and just things that I've been brainstorming. This will get transfer transferred somewhere more formal eventually, but I just needed a place to jot down all of the things that I've been thinking and that I've been talking about with my husband. And then also I left a little space to put like a packing list or something related to the trip, but I did not fill that one out yet. Then last up, we've got this last guided journaling page. And then I'm just going to turn this page over here, the last page in this monthly setup into my line a day memory keeper. And if you are unfamiliar with the practice, it is just a really easy way to get started with journaling and memory keeping. I just write one thing down every single day something that happened, something that I was thinking about, gratitude, whatever it is. Usually it's some kind of highlight or whatever the opposite of a highlight is if it was a bad day, um, something, just one thing from the day. And I've done this for a number of years now and it's just really, really fun. It's a great way to like easily keep track of the year and it's really fun to look back on as well. And then I just filled out the few days that had already passed in the month. I usually try and do this every day, but a lot of times I end up doing like three or four days at a time. And then that's everything for January. All right, that's everything all finished out. Let's take one last flip through. Here is my calendar, my dashboard page, some school information, and my admin catch-up list, which is quite long. This will be my journaling space for at the end of the month. Still deciding on how my book journaling and tracking is going to interplay between here and my new Archer and Olive. So stay tuned. More on that coming. I'm really excited. Split listing. Already starting to think of some things that we need to keep track of. Again, I just feel like I, I was really needing this this month. Definitely a lot to get organized coming out of break and going into the new year. This will be for my photo memory spread. And then my last little journaling section all started here. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed planning with me. Don't forget to subscribe for more. You can also check me out on Instagram and TikTok for even more planner fun. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.